between the Luxembourg government and SES, the world leading satellite operator. Our mission is to provide secure, reliable, and accessible governmental satellite communication services to address the demand resulting from defense and institutional security applications. GovSat-1 will be a multi-mission satellite which will use X-band and military KA band transponders with wide beams as well as with high-powered and fully steerable mission beams. As a geosatellite, GovSat-1 will provide superior, accurate, real-time information wherever it is required. Over Europe, Africa, Middle East and substantial maritime coverage over the Mediterranean and Baltic Seas, as well as over the Atlantic and Indian Oceans. We are coming up on T minus four minutes before launch. Uh, we are tracking no issues at the moment. We've just finished up loading up the helium that's uh, pressurizing the first and second stages. And we're in the very final stages of liquid oxygen and RP-1 loading. Uh, by loading those propellants so close to launch, we can keep them very cold. Uh, and being denser, that means we can load a little bit more of each of those propellants onto the vehicle. We're also performing some final communications checks with the uh, full Falcon 9. And also testing the thrust vector control system, which basically wiggles the engines to make sure that those are properly able to steer uh, Falcon 9 during ascent. Uh, we are preparing for Falcon 9 to take full control of the rest of launch. And the spacecraft is still a go for launch. At this point, uh, we're just coming up on about T minus three minutes before launch. Uh, let's listen in to the last few minutes of terminal count. Stage one locks, load is closed out. All right, folks, and uh, this is, we are just moments away, less than three minutes away. This is a two stage SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket launch uh, that is going to launch the GovSat 1 communication satellite from Florida's Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. Let's listen in to the play by play. There's two locks, load is closed out. Yeah. Vehicles and stuff line. AFTS is ready to launch. Falcon 9 is in the startup. Watch directors go for launch. Minus 30 seconds. Minus 15 seconds, stand by for terminal count. 
nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition, lift off. And there you saw a successful liftoff of the Falcon 9. Uh, stage 1 propulsion all looking nominal. A beautiful clear shot of Falcon 9 ascending through the Florida sky there. Um, about to go through supersonic. You may see a sonic boom with this sort of clear sky. Beautiful supersonic. Uh, coming up shortly, we're about to enter max Q. Uh, that's the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure when the rocket is pushing hardest against the atmosphere. vehicle has passed through max Q. We've successfully passed through that point. That's always a major milestone in, in every rocket launch. Impact engine chill. Uh, we've just begun chilling the second stage engine uh, for the same reason that we chill the first stage engine to make sure that it's ready to be at the the right temperature, the same temperature as the propellant. Um, coming up about 30 seconds from now, we're going to have a few events in quick succession. The first stage engines are going to cut off. The two recovery vessel has AOS. The two stages will separate, and the second stage will ignite. You can see the the plumes fading away as the rocket is is getting out of the atmosphere. Trajectory is still looking good, and those uh, three events, uh, main engine cutoff, separation, and second stage ignition happening right now. Maybe you go. And there you saw it. Uh, first stage successfully cut off, the two stages separated, and the second stage has begun its burn. Um, you saw the retaining ring fall away, and that protects the MVAC, uh, Merlin vacuum engine nozzle during shipping. Um, uh, again, we are not recovering the first stage on this mission, uh, but we are about uh, 30 seconds away from fairing deploy. Uh, the fairing protects the satellite during ascent, but it's not necessary once you get out of the atmosphere. And so we'll let it fall back to Earth uh, to keep Stage that propellant available to loft more satellite. Fairing separation confirmed. And we've got confirmation of the fairings uh, separating. You can see one of the fairing halves in the in the screen behind the second stage engine there. Beautiful clear shot of second stage against the Earth background. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. Uh, trajectory for stage two is still nominal. Uh, this burn is going to continue for about another four minutes, uh, at which point the second stage will then uh, turn off its engine and have a coast phase for about 17 minutes. Uh, it'll be in a parking orbit at that time, uh, and it'll, the coast phase will be uh, preparing for the second burn, which will 
uh, push the satellite into its geostationary transfer orbit. We're about T plus five minutes and 20 seconds at the moment. At about this time, the, the first stage would be on its way back to the drone ship. And it's weird, weirder to consider that we're not actually recovering this one. Uh, SpaceX has landed, I think it's about 20, 20 first stages at this point. And the goal is for each first stage to last tens of launches in the, first, in the short term. And, hundreds or thousands of launches in the long term. All right, folks, in a little background here with this launch designed exclusively, exclusively to address governmental and institu institutional security user needs. The GovSat-1 is the first satellite of GovSat, a public-private partnership between the government of Luxembourg and the world-leading satellite operator, SES. The satellite enables secure communication links between theaters of tactical operations for maritime missions or over areas affected by humanitarian crisis. It is ideal to enable mobility and ISR, intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance applications. The multi-mission satellite offers X-band and military KA band capacity, up to six high-powered, fully steerable spot beams, and an advanced global X band beam. And SpaceX was able to launch this at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station at the world-class launch site that builds on a strong heritage. The site, located at the north end of Cape Canaveral, was used for many years to launch Titan rockets among the most powerful in the U.S. fleet. SpaceX took over the facility back in May of 2008. Nominal, just the way we like it. And about one minute remaining in this first burn to get to a low altitude parking orbit for GovSat-1. Stage one is transonic. LMS, Cape Canaveral, stage one, as expected. Stage two is under terminal guidance. Stage two, AFDS has saved. About 30 seconds away from uh, the second engine cutoff event. And you'll be able to see that on your screen. Stage one landing burn has started. The legs have deployed. And stage one, splashdown. We have Seco. 